It's a common idea, which then people may have second thoughts about, to be sure. But there's that, there's that instinct to say, boy, there's, this is pretty well organized at some level. In some moods, we can see the thing is pretty well organized and extremely complicated. And we can marvel at the structure of a, a little flower on the desert floor and the delicacy of it and say, golly, that's impressive. In 1802, theologian William Paley presented one of the best-known expositions of the design proof. But suppose I found a watch upon the ground, and it should be inquired how the watch happened to be in that place. I should hardly think of the answer which I had before given, that for anything I knew the watch might have always been there. The analogy, of course, supported the idea that just as a watch, with all its intricate gears and mechanisms, could not come to be without a watchmaker, neither could such a highly ordered and purposeful world of nature exist without a designer. But Charles Darwin, with his Origin of the Species, published in 1859, came to a strikingly different conclusion. Now, some people interpret Darwin as overthrowing the premise of Paley's argument. I think that's the wrong way to look at it. I think Darwin said, yes, there is design. There is design. Paley's right. This is something that requires explanation. He's wrong in supposing that where there is design, there has to be a designer that is a mind. What was previously thought to be the work of a supreme being was now an evolutionary process. Paley saw purpose in nature. Darwin saw only order. And so it seemed natural to suppose, well, look, look at us. We're pretty wonderful. Look at, look, at, look at nature. It's pretty wonderful. What made it something more wonderful still? The great creator. And that very intuitive and compelling idea has got a million years of tradition behind it. And then along comes Darwin and just turns it upside down and shows how the more complex can come over long periods of time out of a fundamentally mindless process, a just brute, purposeless, mindless process. On the other hand, the odds against our universe forming as it has are calculated at one in 10 billion to the 124th power. Could the whole universe just be a circumstantial happenstance? Or is it reasonable to suppose that God purposefully created the precise conditions for such a long shot to occur? The actual form of the design argument has been clarified by physicists who point out the uh, amazing fine-tuning of the constants of nature, Planck's constant, gravitational constant. These fundamental physical forces seem to need to be exactly what they are uh, to produce a sort of complex universe we have. So then you say, right, that doesn't prove God. But actually, it means that if there is a God, then the existence of this universe is more probable than it would be if there wasn't a God. When I think of the incredibly rich complexity of things, the incredibly complicated workings of things, and then the, the massiveness of all of it, I find it impossible not to believe that it was God who brought this about. Um, I can try as a philosopher to articulate that carefully in terms of arguments and premises and so forth, but, but, it, but it doesn't arise for me like that, it's an existential response to the experience of the world.